Good evening. My name is Mandy Wan, Public Safety Supervisor. Thank you for joining our virtual Community Area Watch Zoom meeting for August. Tonight we have four very informative presentations. They are Virtual Beautification Award presented by Vanessa Osagera, Code Enforcement on Bulky Items and Shopping Cart Resources presented by Wayne Cole, Public Safety Supervisor. Crime update presented by Deputy Douglas um, from the Los Angeles County Sheriff Department Real Estate Special Assignment Team. And I will wrap up with a COVID update. If you'd like to ask questions to our presenter during the presentation, feel free to type in the chat box and we'll have our presenter address it as soon as possible. Um, if you have missed our July 16 virtual community area watch meeting and would like to see the meeting, you can find the link on our city website, www.cityofrosemead.org, under public safety and community area watch meeting tab. If anytime you need to reach me, please feel free to call me at 626-569-2168 or email me at mwong at cityofrosemead.org. Before we start with the presentations, I'd like to uh, our chief of police would like to say a few words. Good evening, I'm Lieutenant Tony Duong. As you may know, I've been recently appointed to work as your chief of police for this great city of Rosemead. I want to assure you my commitment to keep Rosemead safe by addressing crime as well as quality of life issues. We normally conduct these area watch meetings every month. Due to the pandemic, we will be conducting these virtual meetings for the near future. I hope you take this opportunity to participate so that we can continue to build a strong working relationship with the community. I would also like to take this opportunity to announce the continuation of a recent Rosemead tradition of having coffee with the chief. I'd like to invite you for either a one on one meeting. Again, I solely apologize for this five minutes um, that we had to stop. We had we were having technical difficulties, but we're back on now. This is the 21st century. So now I'm going to send this back over to our beautification commissioner chair, Vanessa Osagera. Vanessa, you're on. Hi, Rosemead. My name is Vanessa Osagera, and I'm the chair of the beautification commission here in Rosemead. And I'm really excited today because I'm going to talk about the seventh annual beautification awards. Now this represents, this is to recognize and honor the um, properties and businesses in Rosemead that have improved or um, beautified their, their property in some way. Um, so as you know, during the pandemic, a lot of people have time on their hands right now. So they're improving their property, they're gardening. So this is a great opportunity for all of you to be recognized for the work you've done to really beautify your property and also improve Rosemead at the same time. So if you look on the slide, um, there's, these are the previous winners, last year's winners, and there are four categories that you can enter. You can nominate yourself, your own property, or a neighbor's pro property, or a business. Um, and the first one is enchanted ed entryway. So any property that has warm, inviting entryway that says, welcome to Rosemead, that's the one you can nominate. The second is best curb appeal. So this is a property that has, um, their landscape catches your eye, or your attention when you're passing by, walking in the car. I know I take walks every night during the COVID situation and I just see so many beautiful houses that I wanna nominate and I'm going to too. So the third is the Rose Award. Uh, this is a property that delights us with roses of any shape, color, size, quantity, really that speaks and says, this is Rosemead. <laughs> and the last is Beautifying Rosemead Award. And this is the grand prize for the best in show property. So um, because of the situation to, con to continue safe practices and social distancing, we'll conduct virtual beautification awards. Um, and the nominations can be submitted by sending an email to beautifyingrosemead at cityofrosemead.org. Um, and you just type in your name, address, phone number, and please send no more than two photos of the property. Clear images are good and good angles are important. And the Beautification Commission will judge these properties 
And then um, the deadline to apply is Thursday, August 27th, a week from today by 10, I'm sorry, by 5 p.m. And again, submit your applications to beautifyingrosemead at cityofrosemead.org. And the winners will be announced at a future city council meeting. And the recipients will be given a really cool beautification award uh, lawn sign to display on their property, which is, is great. And you also earn points with your neighbors, right? A little competitive streak there. Um, so if you have any questions, again, please email beautifyingrosemead at cityofrosemead.org. I really look forward, we all, the whole commission looks forward to seeing your properties and see what you've done. Um, thank you for your time. And I wanna pass it on to Wayne Coe, the public safety supervisor for the next presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa, for a great informative information. Um, right now, uh, we're gonna move on to our third presentation with Deputy Douglas from the LASD Rosemary Special Assignment Team. Wayne Coe is a little bit tied up at the moment, but hopefully he'll be able to join us in a little bit. So turning this over to Deputy Douglas. All right, good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Deputy Ryan Douglas. I am uh, one of the newest members of the uh, special assignment team uh, for the city of Rosemead with the uh, LA County Sheriff's Department. Um, so tonight, uh, these are our topics we're gonna be discussing. We have uh, the part one crime stats update that uh, we have. For the month of July, as well as our uh, two um, highest crimes that are being uh, committed right now in the city. They're gonna be property related crimes with commercial burglary and Grand Theft Auto. So from uh, January 1st, 2020 to July 31st, 2020, we have the 2019 stats where they were during that time on the left column and our current 2020 stats for that same time period. Uh, when you look at it, you can see uh, we have an overall decrease of 4% uh, down on the bottom um, for property crimes and uh, almost 2% decrease for overall part one crimes. So as I said last month, uh, Deputy Farley did cover what part one crime stats are. And just to uh, recap that, they are a collection of the most serious crimes that occur with regularity across the country. And then each department or Police Department, Sheriff's Department, they'll compile these statistics and then they report them to the Department of Justice and uh, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, so DOJ and FBI. So like I said, most of our crime stats have had no change uh, with a 0% if you compare it to where we were in 2019, or they have a negative change, which means we have less crime that had occurred for those different uh, topics. Um, there was a big spike in aggravated assaults, um, but let's go over some of the uh, associated factors with that. Uh, right now, there is a huge economic stress uh, that is occurring due to uh, coronavirus and people having to stay at home. We are seeing a rise in temperature. I think uh, this week we, we've been uh, at triple digit, digits every day this week. And then uh, people are having to stay at home due to stay at home measures put in place by coronavirus. Um, the majority of our assaults um, that we've had in the July of 2020 were domestic in nature, meaning like domestic violence, family related um, assaults. And um, suspects were arrested as a result of those occurrences. So we are seeing that spike, but like I said, it's people are being at home they're stuck at home with each other, it's getting hot, um, tensions rising, and when we do respond, it's uh, ending with someone going to jail behind it. It's not just uh, you know, the suspect getting away or anything like that. Um, even though we have seen this 4% decrease in overall property crime, uh, it is still the largest issue for the city of R Rosemead. Um, most of the larcenies, which includes uh, petty theft and grand theft and shoplifting, um, was a result of someone leaving their uh, 
hide over to house or business. Uh, maybe they left their windows unlocked or they left the, the doors unlocked to their vehicle. So a lot of these crimes could be prevented, these you know, uh, larceny related thefts, uh, if we were locking our doors and locking our windows as a uh, preventative measure. So this is a map of the city of Rosemead. Everywhere you see in this uh, bright purple color is uh, our city and our boundaries. Um, and they're broken down into nine areas. So when, I, when I'm gonna be talking about commercial burglary and Grand Theft Auto today, I'm gonna be covering the north end for areas three and four, which is gonna be Valley Boulevard and to the 10 freeway. And then for the south end of our city, I'm gonna be covering area watch five and seven, which is gonna be pretty much San Gabriel Boulevard to New Avenue off of Garvey Avenue. So our commercial burglaries will be our first uh, crime topic for the night. So our locations are going to be on uh, Valley Boulevard and Garvey Avenue. Those are where we have the majority of our businesses. And those are, as a result, where our commercial burglaries are occurring. They're happening mostly at restaurants and cell phone businesses or electronic stores. Um, on Valley Boulevard, we're seeing the area around Rosemead and Valley, that intersection for areas three and four. If we go back to that crime map, again, areas three and four off of Valley Boulevard. And then on Garvey Avenue, we're seeing a concentration of the crime occurring around Del Mar Avenue for areas five and seven. So Valley and Rosemead and Garvey and Del Mar. Um, each of these areas, if you combine them, so in areas three and four, we saw a total of four commercial burglaries. And again, for Garvey and Dalmar, we saw the same four commercial burglaries. So a total of eight between these uh, two clumped areas. Uh, the trends we're seeing for these crimes are window smashes, where the uh, suspects are going and smashing a front window, or maybe it's a glass door to the, the business at the entrance. And then they go in and grab anything that they can get away with within a few seconds. They're targeting uh, electronic items like iPads, computers, and uh, things of that nature, or cash, like in tip jars or cash registers. We'll go back to uh, this slide. Um, the types of restaurants, uh, when I was reviewing the uh, statistics for this, they're targeting Asian food restaurants. Um, and then businesses for electronics or cell phone stores such as Metro PCS or Sprint. And then we'll move on to prevention and what to uh, think of before calling the police for commercial burglaries. So prevention, uh, some of the things you guys can do uh, to help your business is maybe install some exterior lighting for both the front and the rear of the business on any entrances or exits. Uh, this helps keep it well lit. It will make people more visible to people driving by on the street. When your business is closed, anyone walking in front or at the back of the business will be illuminated as a result of those lighting. Um, try not to leave any money out. So no loose money. If you have like a tip jar at your business or maybe a cash register, uh, take it into a back office and lock the door. Or if you have a safe, you can lock it in a safe um, to secure it. Um, put away your electronics. I know a lot of like the uh, the more modern stores, they'll use a tablet as their checkout center and they'll, uh, customers will be able to put in their credit cards. So you can, you can remove those devices and secure them at night. So any passerby want to be able to see them visible from your, your windows. And then uh, another preventative measure is security gates or doors. Um, one of the common ones is the sliders that go across the entire front of the business. Um, those are very great at preventing people from entering. Um, some things to consider before calling the sheriff's department is uh, determine your losses. Try and, and create a list and compile a list of anything that you feel is missing as a result of the crime. Um, one thing that really helps investigators down the road whenever we contact individuals is uh, serialized property. So anything that when we come out for the initial report, um, we can document with a serial number, we'll get that entered into a system that allows us to track that. And if we stop somebody in the future that has a property, we can run the serial number they're in possession of and see if, it's if it was reported stolen. 
Um, a great thing you can do is anytime you purchase a piece of equipment, like a DVR or an iPad, tablet, cell phone, for your business that's gonna be there um, overnight, um, compile a list either on your phone or on a piece of paper you keep at home of the, the, you know, the make, the model, and the serial number for those devices. That way in the event a crime occurs where they're taken, you'll have that information available for um, the deputies when they respond to your business. Uh, lastly is uh, if you don't have surveillance cameras installed, I would highly recommend getting them installed. They're a great resource for us um, to not only track, you know, crimes that are occurring to you, but any other crime that might be passing by your business uh, any time of the day. And they're great to have both on the inside and outside of your business. Um, if you do have cameras, uh, before you call, if you have the uh, resources, download the footage of the incident and uh, put them on a CD or a flash drive. So when the deputy comes to take the report, you can say, hey, I, here's the footage. I, I've already prepared it for you. And they can take that and put that into evidence for the detectives. Um, or have the computer already logged on and to the point where the crime is occurring. And then the deputy can use their digital camera to record, record that footage and then uh, in the future, we can come and pull it off of your, uh, your security camera. But at least we'll be able to record it with our digital cameras and book that so the detectives have something to work off of. And that's going to be all I have for commercial burglaries. Um, next, we're going to move to grand theft auto or vehicle theft. So again, we're going to be focusing on those same locations, Valley Boulevard and Garvey Avenue. Um, we're seeing a lot of the vehicle thefts occurring on the areas five and seven around San Gabriel Boulevard and Garvey. And then for areas three and four, we're seeing on Valley Boulevard and Rosemead Boulevard again. For July, we had a total of nine Grand Theft Autos between those two areas, six which occurred on Valley Boulevard and three which occurred in the area of Garvey Avenue. Uh, hours of occurrence are going to be mixed hours. A lot of the thefts that are occurring on Valley are occurring inside of um, parking lots to like restaurants or business centers. Um, we're seeing the, the, the thefts occur between the hours of 11 o'clock in the morning to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And then again, we see a mixed hour of between 1 o'clock in the morning and 5 o'clock in the morning. So very late at night while we're sleeping. The trends for the vehicles taken, we're seeing the older model Hondas between 1997 and 2000. We had a total of four Honda Civics between those years taken out of the nine reported for the month of July. We also had Toyota Camrys year 2004 out of the nine reported too. So these two vehicle makes and models and years uh, accounted for six out of the nine thefts. We also had uh, four where people left their cars unlocked with keys inside, and that was the result of um, the theft. Was, it was a theft of opportunity. Going back to what I originally spoke on with our larceny crimes is it's a crime of opportunity. So people, if they are checking your door and it's unlocked, they're going to take that unlocked opportunity to you know, deprive you of your property, whether that be a purse or a bag left inside the car or the car itself. Some prevention we can talk about for vehicle theft is uh, maybe invest in a steering wheel lock. They're very, very uh, good tools. It makes it very difficult to uh, steer or maneuver your car. Um, another one is what we call an ignition anti-theft device or a switch. It's also referred to as a kill switch. Um, it's a, a device you're able to install and before you start your car, you turn the switch into the on position, which allows your ignition to be started. So once that switch is on, you can turn your key and it will start the vehicle. If that switch is not engaged, unfortunately, no one will be able to take the car. And if you put it in a, in a spot that only, that only you know about, you'll be successful in, uh, having, in preventing your vehicle from being taken. Some other simple ones we can do that don't cost any money is just park your car in a garage or behind a gate. And if you can lock the gate and secure it, that's better. Um, lastly, is just double check that your vehicle is locked. 
like I said, the majority of our crimes were unlocked vehicles, doors, windows. So just double check that. Um, some things to consider uh, when calling to report the crime to the sheriff's department is if you have any large valued items in the vehicle, make sure you, you document those uh, when the deputy comes to take the report. Have your license plate number ready. A lot of insurance cards, they'll have your, uh, your VIN number on there. We can use your VIN number to access that, but it helps get your vehicle, helps us get your vehicle entered into the stolen vehicle system much faster, which helps us recover your vehicle that much quicker. And lastly, just notify us as soon as possible. Um, the quicker we know about the, your vehicle missing, the quicker we can get it entered. And that way, if any police officer doing their duty runs your license plate and that suspect's inside, they'll immediately get notified, um, hey, that's a stolen car, and then we can recover your property for you. One of, uh, this is an example of a steering wheel lock. You can see that it's very bulky and very big, and if you try and turn that, the bar that extends past your steering wheel will prevent anyone from maneuvering the car. So it's not gonna stop them from starting your car, it's just gonna stop them from trying to move it once they have it started. The last thing I'd like to talk about is what we call our crime stoppers. It's a completely anonymous tool that the Sheriff's Department and other agencies uh, across California use um, to report crime or suspicious activity. No identifying information will be used um, if you choose to use this method to report anything. Um, they are looking for information regarding suspicious activity in your neighborhoods, or if you see a, uh, a flyer from your, your local agency or the Sheriff's Department requesting information, you're able to anonymously um, give information related to an open investigation. Um, if your information leads to an arrest or helps get a, a detective or an investigator in the right direction, you could be eligible for an, a reward of up to $1,000. So there is, it is, you know, there is some lucrative means behind it, but our, our ultimate goal is to keep the streets safe and allow um, victims or allow witnesses to report information without having the fear of anyone knowing that they're doing it. It, it, it protects them, it keeps it anonymous. We do not trace the phone. We do not trace the email back to whoever supplied the information. It's all just to help us aid it, aid in our investigations. So lastly, I would like to open uh, the, the floor just for any questions or any answers or anything to that nature. Alrighty. Well, we are going to be moving on with the presentation. We're going to take it to the fabulous Mr. Wayne Coe from Public Safety. He is our supervisor for Public Safety. Wayne, the floor is all yours. Hello, good evening, uh, everyone. My name is Wayne Coe, and I'm, I am the Public Safety Supervisor with the City of Rosemead. Um, the slide that I will, I will be presenting will be um, code enforcement uh, for shopping carts that are abandoned or left um, on the parkway, sidewalk, or curb. You may visit the City of Rosemead, dot, um, City of Rosemead website for um, the removal of the abandoned shopping carts um, and uh, place a request to report abandoned shopping carts. Uh, you may also call 1-800-252-4613 or you may also call the Public Works Department at 626-569-2262. On the city of Rosemead website, it's going to be city, uh, cities, Rosemead, round the clock, 
it's a CRM system. For bulky items that are left outside on uh, residential neighborhoods, um, if you have a bulky item that is bigger than something that fits in your trash bin, you would need to schedule an appointment with Republic Services prior to your trash day. For bulky item pickups, such as mattresses, furniture, or large debris appliances, uh, residential customers from one to four units, uh, there is a 25 free pickups each year, but limited to five items per pickup. Uh, as mentioned, that you would need to call into Republic Services prior to your trash day. Uh, 24 hours, 48 hours prior, if your trash day is on Monday, then please call on Friday and uh, just let them know that uh, you have five items or, or, or less and um, you can specify uh, which type of items you have and they'll be placed on the parkway. Please do not place any bulky items on the sidewalk, which may prevent um, pedestrians from traveling through. Um, and also place them by the curb so it doesn't block um, the street. For multifamily commercial customers, five or more units of, uh, of an apartment, or five or more units is considered an apartment. So um, you would uh, speak to your manager or the landlord, or uh, if it's a commercial customer, then you would also um, just call for public services and there's a fee that they will charge. For bulk items, in the commercial and uh, apartment complexes. Um, the items are listed from one to two items. It's $31.67. Three to five items are, or is $63.33. Six to 10 items, $126.67. And 11 to 20 items, which is $253.33. If you have any questions, feel free to contact the Rosemary Public Safety Department uh, over here on Garvey, or you may call us at 626-569-2292, or you may also leave a voicemail. You may leave a voicemail on 24-7, and uh, someone will um, respond back to your voicemail regarding your, your nature of your, your request at 626-569-2129. And um, the next uh, presentation will be from Mandy Wong, our public safety coordinator, supervisor, or public safety supervisor. Thank you. All right, I'm hoping that you guys are enjoying the three presentation that was presented earlier. As if you have any question at any time, always feel free to reach out to us. Um, our public safety department here is 626-569-2292 and we'll be happy to forward your message to any of the presenter or if you have any, any question at any time, feel free to call that number as well. So I'm presenting the last presentation which will be on COVID-19 update. And all right, so um, today's um, presentation on COVID-19, I'm going to be covering a few, um, few things. I'm going to talk about some of the confirmed cases and deaths in Rosemead, symptoms to watch, um, the latest health officer order update on um, school resources, senior resources, and COVID-19 resources. So the confirmed cases in the city of Rosemead as of um, August 19th is 709. And then for the Los Angeles County, there were 225,827. And then for um, California, it's, uh, 638,831, and then of course the confirmed cases in the United States is a little bit over 5 million. 
Um, any of these information, you're, um, you are feel free to go into the uh, Los Angeles County Public Health Department website, and that will give you um, more of other cities breakdown as well. And then on related death, again, city of Rosemead, there's 23, unfortunately, as of um, August 19th. In LA County, there's um, 5,392. In California, it's a little bit over uh, 11,000. And in the United States, it's over 171,000 deaths so far. Now, symptoms to watch. Um, these symptoms usually appear between two to 14 days after an exposure to the virus. And of course, these are not in any particular order, the symptoms that may appear. So any, if you have a fever, a cough, shortness of breath, or any difficulty of breathing, chills, muscle pain, headaches, sore throat, new loss of taste or smell, fatigue, congestion or runny nose, nausea or vomiting and or diarrhea, again, these symptoms are not in any particular order. If you are not feeling well and you have some of these symptoms, one or more of them, please, you need to contact your doctor. Again, um, we are urging everybody, public health is urging everyone to avoid the three C's. That is crowded places, avoid crowded places, confined spaces, and close contact with anybody not in your household and make sure you guys are six feet apart. So I'm going to show you, um, the next two slides is a video that I want to show to you, which is from the Center for Control and Disease. It's just a recent video in the last few days. So just showing you how to wear your mask correctly and to, of course, before you wear your mask, to wash your hands. Make sure the ears are looped around your ears. The, 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 to hold your ears and make sure it's snuggle against your face. And make sure whenever you're outside, you wear your mask. It's a must now. Everybody must do their part in order to slow and to lower the spread of COVID-19. So everybody, please, please do your part. Oops. Here's another short video. So what do we do and how, what can we do to stop, stop the spread of germs? Make sure we wash our hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Make sure you clean any surface area with a disinfectant spray. Spray it and then wipe it. Make sure if you're gonna cough or sneeze that you use a tissue, cover your mouth and, and, and your nose and throw that tissue away. And again, we urge you to make sure you wear a mask and make sure that mask cover your mouth and your nose. And of course, don't touch your eyes, nose, or in, in your mouth. And if you're at the shopping area, anywhere you're at, make sure you keep a six feet distance. If somebody gets close to you, you remind them. And of course, if you're sick, please stay home and then call your doctor and then, and then your doctor will give you more guidance. Um, any of these videos or anything that you also want to share with your, um, your, with your children, you can always go to the website, www.cdc.gov coronavirus. Okay, so here are some recent health orders from the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health. Okay, so what can be open in terms of recreation, entertainment, travel, and learning? So I compile a list, and of course you can also get the same list at the LA County Public Health. Um, beaches can be open. So all the stuff that are listed here can be open. Campgrounds, community garden, day camps, drive-in movie theater, golf course, um, horse riding, hotels, libraries, only curbside only, and then model airplane area, music, film, and production. And then as, as we continue on, on on what can be open in terms of recreation, entertainment, travel, and learning is also parks. 
Now, playgrounds are closed at the parks. Um, tennis courts can be opened. Now, if you live in an apartment or condo that has a public pool, that also can be open. If you're out on public trails, either you're walking or hiking, please, um, that can be open, but please wear a mask. And then of course, any vehicle-based parade can, uh, is also can be open. All right, we continue to move on. Now these um, recreation, entertainment, travel, and learning can only be outdoor service only. Again, I apologize. It must be the heat because they're telling us to conserve energy. So they're just telling us intermittently they're, they're shutting us down. But I'll try to wrap it up as soon as possible. And I apologize and thank you for being patient with this. So moving on to what's outdoor service again, places of worship. So uh, again, um, services can be outside. If it is outside, again, it has to be six feet distance and everybody has to wear a mask. Okay, what is considered closed for now? Under recreation, entertainment, travel, and learning. So all the stuff that you see on there is uh, on, the, uh, on your screen is considered closed, which would be arcades, bowling alleys, and movie theaters, bars, brewery, um, pubs, wineries, tasting rooms, family entertainment centers, basketball and volleyball courts, cart rooms, and anything with festival and theme amusement parks. All those are still closed for now. And then of course, hot tub, jacuzzi, spas um, are also closed. Live performance, concerts, uh, lounges and nightclubs, stadiums and arenas is also closed to the public and youth sports leagues are also closed. Now, what is considered open for in-store shopping services, which falls under the category of shopping, restaurant, and personal care? So grocery stores, supermarkets, certified uh, farmer's market, food banks, convenience store, wholesale clubs, and pharmacy, those are open. Um, anything such as lower risk retail store as bookstore, jewelry store, furniture store, toy stores, and clothing store, um, can be open. And then pet stores, animal daycare, boarding facility, and veterinarians uh, can also be open. Um, as we continue on, what can be open? Hardware, hardware building, home appliance, and pool supply stores are also can be open. Uh, if if an indoor mall or shopping center that has its own public entrance, they can be open. But if, you, if the stores are inside a mall, then it cannot be opened. And again, um, breweries, pubs, and wineries um, are, are open ex except for on-site consumption and tasting are not allowed. Okay, and then of course, restaurant and cafes. Anything for delivery, drive-through, or patio, outside dining is allowed. Anything that's indoor is not allowed. And again, we did touch base about indoor, um, stores in, in indoors malls or shopping center. If they don't have their own entrance to get into that particular store, then it will not be able to open up at this time. Again, if it's outdoor activities that is allowed, again, a mask must be worn at all times. Okay, personal care services. Um, again, hair salons, uh, barber salons, nail salons, those could be out outdoor services. Only and only if the permitting agency allows that outdoor services. Again, with those, you have to ensure that we are following um, the, the LA County Public Health um, guideline as well because of health and safety issues. Okay, again, what is closed? I know I talked about this because I love going to the shopping malls and right now um, they are not open again because they don't have their own personal uh, entrance to the malls. Because the malls are usually, indoor malls are usually 
one big door going into all the different um, boutique stores. So those are closed for right now. Okay, for healthcare services, what can be open would be the uh, would be clinics, hospital, dental clinics, physical therapy, chiropractic offices, optometrists, mental or behavioral health providers, and other health settings. And what is closed? This is a recent um, health order that uh, was established um, the 12th of August. It's for um, schools K-12 and um, all public and private school K-12 um, are closed within the County of Los Angeles. They are to remain closed. So how are the kids are getting their education? They are getting through distant learning. And then Institute for Higher Education is also closed right now. So colleges and university in the Los Angeles County will not be able to resume in person uh, for instruction as well. Again, their instruction will be via distant learning. Okay, for school resources in the city of Rosemead, if your ch uh, child or children goes to Garvey School District, I have listed some um, their, their district office and their phone number and their website if you need to get a hold of them for any information. Their first day of school is August 24th. Of course, it is distant learning for them as well. If your children or child goes to Rosemary School District, their address is listed there and their phone number as well as their website. Um, they have started school already. They started August 19th and again, it's distant learning. And then if your uh, child or children go to Rosemead High School, um, the numbers listed there, Rosemead High School is actually part of um, El Monte Union High School School District. So their website is listed there and their first day of school uh, was August 18 and they're also distant learning. Okay, for City of Rosemary Senior Resources, um, we have a fabulous senior lunch program. Um, that program is at the Garvey Community Center. The address is 9108 Garvey Avenue. Uh, currently, due to the pandemic, um, their senior lunch program is to to-go service. Um, their lunches are picked up and then taken home to eat. Lunches are distributed on a first come, first serve basis. And the way how they distribute the food works like this. Um, it starts at 10.30 a.m. on Monday. When you go through the drive-through, you will get food for Monday and Tuesday. Then on Wednesday at 10.30 it starts, you get food for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Okay, um, it's a first come first serve. So they start at 1030 until all the food is exhausted. Another senior resource is crafts to go. We want to keep our mind going and um, you can do fun projects from your home. So each week a park and rec staff will guide you into some creative activity. Uh, each craft kit will contain all the material you need plus instructions step by step to create that project. Um, there will also be an instructional videos posted uh, weekly um, per that um, project. So if you have any information regarding senior resources about the lunch or the craft program, um, please feel free to contact James Laura. He is the uh, Parks and Rec supervisor that kind of oversees the senior program. His number is 626-569-2134. So we go on to the youth program for City of Rosemead uh, youth. Um, they have a program called Sports in a Bag program. Now this program is designed for parent and child children participation. And they kind of uh, play together, work together on this. And it's to learn the fundamental uh, skills of basketball and our soccer. And you take it home and that's where there's the interaction between the child and the parent. So each bag inside a Rosemary Youth Sports drawstring uh, will have the sports equipment and the participant manual. And again, every week, a recreation staff will include an instructional video to assist the parent in teaching the various drills and skills. Now these bags are limited. And if you have any question regarding this sports in a bag program or any youth program that is coming up, 
please feel free to contact Tam Chu. He's also the Parks and Recreation Supervisor. His number is 626-569-2265. And then other senior resources throughout the LA County is called Home Deliver Meals for Older Adults. Um, these are for um, adults um, age 60 and over. And um, these are meals delivered to your home. Um, they don't look at income source. And the number is, you can call them at 1-800-510-2020, or you can visit the agent.ca.gov. And another uh, program that was uh, recently um, it created due to COVID is called the Great Place Delivering Program. Um, if you live in LA County, feel free to, to call 211 for this service. If you live in the city of Rosemead, please call me at 626-569-2168 and I'll be happy to um, uh, help you with the application process. The Great Place is the two hot meals delivered every um, two hot meals Monday through Friday. And then um, if you have any concerns or anything that you want more general information regarding the COVID-19, there is a statewide information hotline established, or you can call 833-422-4255 or visit the, um, the website at covid19.ca.gov. And of course, you can always call dial 211 on your phone and you could tell them whatever resources you need. Um, they will assist you or refer you to a number where they can also help you. If you want to just browse through the website to see what they have, always feel free to uh, go to 211.org. Okay, if you want any information or anything, um, you can always go to our city of Rosemead um, or uh, we mentioned the county. And then Department of Public Health, there's the state of California, Center for Disease Control and Prevention, which is the cdc.gov. And then if you have any questions or anything, always feel free to call me. This is my number and my email, of course, if you need anything. So this kind of concludes our area watch for August. And hopefully like the chief has mentioned in the beginning that we want to continue this. Um, this is the momentum that we're building and that we'll hopefully have another one next month will be the third Thursday at 6 p.m. Um, let me just stop a sec. Is there any question in the chat before we do a, any conclusion? All right. Well, thank you everyone for, if there's nothing, if I don't see any questions um, on the chat box, um, if you do have a question, email me and I will get back to you. And thank you everyone for your participation. We will see you again via Zoom Zoom next month. But in the meantime, until we can actually see us physically, please, please wear your mask and do your part. All right, take care and be safe. Have a good night.